Okay, so uh, let me introduce uh, today's topic. Let me introduce uh, to today's speakers. And uh, uh, let me start actually with uh, first speaker. Uh, she is uh, uh, Dr. Maha Al Sheikh, uh, Assistant Professor of Logistic Operation and Supply Chain Risk Management. She is consultant uh, in supply chain and logistics, and as well commissioner in Jordan Custom and Investment Commission. So this uh, smart, young, and beautiful lady is joining us from Jordan. So thank you for for joining us today. Uh, second speaker is Wolf Dieter Schumacher. He is supply chain and logistic expert, owner and CEO of Productive Vision, a uh, consulting company in Germany. Uh, he helps businesses uh, to develop business processes, software uh, system integration, and uh, uh, what is also beautiful about his experience. Uh, he used to, uh, to work and have business in Australia. Right now, he's working and having business in Germany. So if we're talking about intercontinental business, right, he's really a uh, right perf and perfect person to talk to. So welcome, uh, Wolf. We will be really happy to hear your opinion today. Um, Mm -hmm. Our third uh, uh, speaker is Alex Koshulko, uh, actually doctor Alex Koshulko. He is co-founder at GMDH Streamline. He is leading supply chain planning expert with more than 10 years of experience in demand forecasting, inventory planning, and optimization. Thanks for joining us, uh, Alex. Thanks, and Natalie. Thank you. Uh, and one more speaker, uh, he is Kerala Srisk, uh, Lean Manufacturing Section Head, International Supply Chain Consultant and Lecturer. Uh, he is teaching uh, 10,000 students from 130 countries, which is really, really beautiful. And uh, thanks for joining us too, Kerala. Okay, so here you go. You're with us. Okay, beautiful. Because I know that you have experienced some technical issues, but I'm really happy to see you here. Right Not now. anymore. <laughs> okay, beautiful, beautiful. So we have four speakers, and uh, uh, my name is Natalie. Um, I am VP of Partnership at GMDH Streamline, and actually, what is my passion and what my team knows. I do, I consolidate supply chain exports all around the world. And as you can see, we have Jordan, Egypt, US, Germany. Me personally, I'm in Istanbul right now. So really, we have a very international uh, discussion today. And guys, I know that we have guests from uh, other countries. Uh, you will also have uh, opportunity and possibility to communicate. So our uh, discussion is very, very, very global today. Beautiful. Let's move on and let's actually introduce, introduce uh, our topic for today. And topic is extremely interesting, very relevant. Uh, actually, COVID-19 outbreak uh, sent shockwaves to the world economy. And we are now facing a full scale of consequences, one of which is actually supply chain disruption. And approximately 75% of supply chain companies experience supply base production or disruption hardship as a result of the pandemic. So this is according to McKinsey research, 75%, but I do believe this uh, number goes closer to 100 because everything which is done in business, uh, it, it barely can live uh, and survive without supply chain. Uh, but actually, again, before moving to discussion, to discussion, uh, I would love to remind you about our rules. So today we really have discussion, not a webinar. Each of you has an uh, opportunity to unmute yourself, but please uh, stay muted until I ask uh, our attendees to ask questions or comment. This is important. So please let's be respectful and supportive to each other polite and friendly, just to make sure that we are moving on properly in time and regarding time. I do expect to finish our discussion in one hour, so 60 minutes. Uh, this is maximum we have for today. You know, time is our main resource. So let's respect it too, okay? Okay, beautiful. So uh, let's move on to discussion questions, okay? And uh, I would really love to start with two general. 
but at the same time to core questions. So they are, what are the reasons behind the container shortage crisis? And what is the current situation in supply chain in your country? And uh, again, ladies first. So I would love to address this question to Dr. Maha. Please, stage is yours. Hello, who are you? I'm pleased to be with you to discuss uh, the crisis in the international supply chain. I am Dr. Maha Al Sheikh from Amman, Jordan. Uh, really, I'm honored to be with you, and uh, I want to thank you, Natalie, and all of you, and all of our speakers and our uh, guests. So when we talk about the supply chain, we talk about the, the whole parts about the supply chain in uh, the logistic in the worldwide economy. So when we talk about the supply chain now in 2021, we talk about the unexpected event that caused the delays in the supply chain networks around the world. Uh, the idea about the supply chain here that we have uh, shipping back two times in the number with empty boxes and empty containers uh, around our cross our docks. Uh, the port here uh, in America, China, uh, uh, Middle East now is empty with uh, containers. Uh, and it, it will be the ports continue to be busy over the next several months. Uh, but we don't have any boxes. What's the meaning of the container? We talk about uh, small or large or medium boxes that has uh, the goods of our uh, international supply chain trading. Uh, we talk about in the, our container about the demand. Uh, we have something called uh, the demand for refuel container uh, in 2021, we can see that it has been increasing due to both the global and regional trade growth. Uh, sometimes we, we must, as an academic perspective, we talk about, uh, or perspective, sorry, uh, we must talk about that we must to help identifying irregular, irregular demand points. So, when we talk about the container shortage crisis, we talk about something called a regular demanding point. So if we face that, so we talk about the huge problem, not only crisis, because we using, uh, we don't use any adjustment forecasting uh, or any accurate forecasting for what will be happen after 2022, or 2023 by using 20 to 40 feet containers. This is the main idea. And when we talk about the healthy crisis COVID-19, we must to remember the great lockdown. So the, the great crisis or the great lockdown COVID-19 that affect the international food markets. All of us are afraid of have no food in our world. This is the idea. Why? Because if you remember the food markets within the COVID-19 pandemic, we remember that this virus affects the agricultural sector. This is the first thing. Another thing, we talk about the freight shipping. Freight shipping nowadays is, is a unique and unusual event. Now, we can say that the pandemic uh, has us facing worldwide container shortage crisis. This is a crisis make us lack of container and affect down entire supply chain and disrupting trade in a global scale. This is the second thing. Now, we face the container terminal display several operational inefficiency. So we, we must to think about, in, for example, in America, we have two ports. We can make two ports. One of the port is for uh, our dry goods. One of go uh, port will be for several poles uh, goods. Why? Because we have to make the balance between the exporting and the importing goods. Uh, in America, we don't have now the balance because no, now we have the imbalance one. 
and we talk about the infective uh, terminals between the China and the America. That makes us know the, uh, the whole idea about the lack of a production within the factories in the China and the demanding or the increasing or uh, increased demanding from America or the worldwide. This is the, the, the crisis that we have continuous demanding, that we have increasing demanding, and we shocked, oh my God, where is our productions or where is our goods? And now we are talking about the container shortage. Where is our containers? The, the new, the recent uh, cases or the recent studies, and as all of us are reading or watching TV, we are talking. They are talking about the, the containers or the empty containers. We can't find them uh, in America, or Los Angeles. So, okay, we, we need the demand. We need the, our factories. We need our goods. Uh, after 2022, we have no idea. Today, uh, I'm reading uh, a, a study, a, a small report on the New York Times. It talks that we don't know what will happen for 2022 or 2023. This is the crisis for to talk about the infective terminals. And, um, you know, uh, I can see from my academic uh, idea that the container transportation has undertaken most of the transportation tasks with the advantage of the huge or large volume and low cost. So when we use the container or the containers, we use it to low cost productions or goods between the trading between the countries. So after the pandemic, after the container shortage crisis, we can see and we can read and we can see the increasing of what? Of the cost. Okay. So we faced something called a limited resources, a limited equipment resources, make the container ter terminal unable to meet the increasing of the demand or the volume of the containers of freight. This is the idea of the container shortage. If we talk or define, we can define the idea of container shortage as how to list the increasing of the volume container freight. Because after that increasing, we can see the increasing of the cost. We will no longer see any goods and this construction cost will increase the time of a storage yard will be increased and the purchasing will be decreased. So if you are an academic or you are one of them in the industry or the logistic or supply chain, you can see that we must find the right strategy of the yard in the port. Yard of the port, it makes, or, or it's a concept in the container terminals and um, we can see that we must to make a sharing yards. I can give you uh, this, if, if you give me, for example, uh, sorry, if you give me a permission to share uh, uh, one of the picture, uh, excuse um, me. Yes, uh, we can do this uh, permission, I believe, but we have to like move to next speaker. So let's do next. I will ask our speakers, uh, next speaker to move on. I will ask our support team to give you this permission. And as soon as we come back to your question, because I have more questions related to this topic, feel free to share the screen, okay? So please, Mary, let this uh, uh, opportunity for Maha to share her screen. And right, right now, I would love both actually to share your uh, opinion, again, considering your um, huge experience. We are dealing with uh, small and medium-sized businesses here in Germany. These are mostly, uh, in many cases, are providers for, for automobile parts. You know, in Germany, we have a strong automobile manufacturing uh, industry and they, they source, uh, partly so mostly source uh, parts from China. So China and many small companies actually don't produce anymore, but the Chinese produce for them. So they're, they're sourcing parts in China and the, chi and the parts are coming too late or not at all. That, that is a big problem. On the other hand, uh, like what Maya just mentioned, 
uh, their containers missing. They, they get lost somewhere in America, mostly behind some factory doors or something. So they, they, they miss out on, on, on containers. On the other hand, we don't deliver enough stuff out of, out of, out of Germany into other countries because of the pandemic. That is, that is, a, that is a huge uh, problem. Uh, we have one Chinese customer I'm thinking of. They, they, they're not producing here, but they're producing in China again, medical equipment, particularly in the pandemic for the pandemic. And they have big problems with uh, getting the lead times right. They have huge orders by, by, by the Bavarian government and other governments. And uh, they, they do have the problem that uh, the goods are not coming in well enough. The warehouses are too small, and so they're missing warehouse space, which is a big problem worldwide, as I imagine. And, and so they're missing out on warehouse space. On the other hand, they can't get enough stuff quickly enough into the country. So, so, basically, so basically, their clients are quite unhappy with that situation. And they ask us whether we can alleviate that situation. It comes back to planning, as Maya turned, uh, play, uh, mentioned uh, very importantly, the planning is, is many do not really plan. Many companies do not really plan here. They basically uh, try to cope with the situation. And uh, so that's, uh, the situ that's the current uh, situation that we have here. Uh, we do have a big port in Germany, which is Hamburg. Hamburg is, a, is the largest port in Germany, even one of the largest ports in the whole of Europe. And they have overflown with containers from China in particular, from Asia, Japan, other countries. And uh, they do have similar problems than the ones that I um, tried to explain. Thank you, but that's my situation at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, actually, can we uh, also invite Alex? Uh, um, so again, we have a problem and let's try to, to look at this problem from a mathematical scientific point of view. And Alex, I know that you have a PhD in mathematical modeling and more than 15 years of experience in predictive analytics. So please uh, tell us, can your background help us understand what could be the following consequences and what outcomes we should expect in the future? Thanks, Natalie, for this uh, nice question. Uh, yeah, uh, we all try to analyze what would happen and... Um, um, based on my experience and what I'm seeing, I could uh, say that uh, in the future we should expect that uh, transportation costs are not going to return to their initial levels. Um, another thing I'm uh, uh, almost confident will happen is inflation uh, due to unsatisfied demand, demand on, the, on one hand and the uh, latest dollar injections on the other hand. Um, interesting that uh, we all heard about bullwhip effect in supply chains, and uh, we always consider this can happen to a single um, company, but uh, currently we see this effect in the global supply chain, and uh, that leads to unnecessary carrying costs that is unfortunate and uh, most probably we will have to um, have that issue in well into 2022. So that's what will continue to happen. Um, I think uh, it's an opportunity for domestic suppliers because uh, uh, now import um, uh, is more complicated. And um, finally, I predict that everything will get to normal uh, but that will be uh, the new normal. So let's adopt. So actually, each crisis teaches us something new, true? True, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, at least something positive, because, you know, each speaker is sharing their uh, actual situation. And it sounds more and more scary with each word, but again, so let's let's find out. So what is this discussion about? So let's find uh, the solution before we still actually, because we still can make this preemptive strike, right? We can uh, we can uh, learn how to move on. So let's, uh, before um, coming back to Maha and before letting her uh, share her screen, let's also listen actually to our four speaker. Kiralas, please share with us a situation which is actually in Egypt. How is it going over there? 
Okay, so um, in Egypt, we have witnessed a real masterpiece of uh, an academic preview of um, the sustainability of different supply chain models that uh, before COVID crisis, as many people believe that the modern strategies are the future and decreasing your number of DCs and going into central DCs and into importing materials and into uh, reducing the, the, the capital invested in, uh, in, in buildings and starting more to, to build on your, uh, your assets uh, with third parties. Uh, but in COVID, uh, it was a real test to both old school and modern strategies. Uh, and actually the results were, were very fascinating to be honest. Um, when the curfew was uh, was announced, people um, started going to the supermarkets and started buying literally everything with uh, with large quantities, which shifted actually the purchasing uh, process from loyalty uh, based purchasing behavior or a need uh, based on the customer need. Uh, but actually, it, it became all the same whether the product is good or is bad, good packaging, bad packaging, uh, high price, low, low price, in the end, as long as it's food and as long as it can be uh, stored in my house, I'm gonna buy it. So the only objective that uh, dominated our supply chains were, uh, was the uh, availability. So in Egypt, the strongest supply chain was not the, the supply chain that has the lowest cost, or the shortest lead time because it wasn't possible due to the curfew and the streets closed on all this stuff. So actually the strongest supply chain was the supply chain that could uh, uh, refill its shelves in front of the customers and become mo much more available than its competitors. Which actually after six months, um, the results were, were very clear because the, the market shares were distributed in a very different way because some companies with major names and brand names were dominating the market before COVID, but due to the lack of avail product availability on the shelves, as they lost their market share. Uh, I believe uh, after after the COVID, um, I don't believe that we are going, and I actually agree with Alex, I don't believe we are going to shift back to uh, how things worked before the, the COVID uh, outbreak. I believe we are creating the new normal right now and we have to adapt with it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. So, um, Maha, please, stage is yours. Please share your picture. You can't see our picture. No. Okay. Uh, here we can see two terminals the container terminal and uh, the dry port. Uh, one of them will be uh, as a solution uh, to make the balance between the demand and the uh, circles. So here in the first container terminal, we can make it as a, a shortage demand or shortage container. And the other one will be the circles container uh, terminal. So if we see the, the picture, uh, uh, it must be clear we can see that how the goods can uh, make from automatic or container truck can be flow to the transport uh, passenger, to container truck, to the customer and the container truck to the final just a destination as a goods. Uh, I will stop sharing the, uh, the, the picture to introduce more uh, idea. Okay. Uh, I will talk about something called uh, the yard. The, oh, we talk at the uh, marine industry as the yard operation space. Here we talk about uh, that we can use uh, the e-commerce as a digitalization supply chain for increasing 140 million square feet logistic space. And we must to know in logistics that the port must work to editing digital operation to improve shipping and logistics. This is one, the, uh, one of the solutions we must uh, 
used to uh, overcome these challenges. And when we talk, the, take the idea of the balance between the York sharing the strategy between the uh, shortage container terminal and the surplus the storage space to make the new space, we must do think for the another solution. How to sharing the new storage space? How to find the problem in one of the different idea it talks about the impound containers. So uh, when you read the report, you can see that they take the idea review from the outbound containers. No, we must do take an idea from the different perspective from the impound containers, which is increasing the space. The, the other idea that when we share the strategy to balance the shortage and the surplus uh, two yards, we must to talk about the, how to increase the high quality plans, how to achieve costing saving, how to solve the efficiency, how to present the solution for our business, not only for America or China, or, or for example, Akapa ports, or for example, Jeddah, uh, Islamic, Islamic Jeddah port. No, it will be for the, all the ports, Mexico ports, uh, America, uh, China. Uh, for example, uh, I can uh, give you one of the solutions uh, I've read in case study for accuracy 2020. He, he gave us an example about the plastic or reusable containers to use within that for our food industry. The plastic container can employ an infinitely reusable and recyclable package. This is uh, will be in the complex logistic uh, and can manage the system in our life cycle. And it's such a complex packaging network can give us a long life cycle for our supply chain. So when we talk about the continuous supply chain, we must think about the resilience supply chain or the resilient supply chain. Why? We must talk about the uh, in, in complex logistic and we quite about, about how to make our supply chain is resilient. Because if you make it resilient, will be you will be reduce the cost. Uh, and it will be profitability or for the long term or for the long time sustainability to close the closed loop network of our supply chain from supplying the goods to the final destination to our customer. We Thank can see that. Maha, we can still have only 15 seconds to you. So please summarize. We have to move to other, other speakers. I'm sorry, it takes time. Okay, no, I will talk about uh, at the end about the automated freight management uh, system. This will be handling uh, the goods like cement, like uh, grains, like package uh, comedy. And uh, this is uh, will be great for our uh, as a solution for our supply chain. Thank you a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this passionate speech. Thank you so much. So actually, what we can understand is that nowadays global business landscape market conditions are changing with the speed of light literary, and it becomes more and more difficult to make right managing decision. But at the same time. Uh, as humanity, we are trying to extend the limits, right? We are trying to extend limits of our knowledge and vision. And uh, um, Maha uh, also mentioned about digital solutions. So uh, can those solutions be really effective? So this is actually uh, one more question I would love to discuss because again, um, both is uh, a consultant who is helping businesses to go digitalize and more efficient. The same Carlos, the same Alex. Um, so actually, let's address this question to Alex. Can you please advise us if supply chain uh, planning software really can reduce the impact of container shortage? Is it possible? Can it do it? Uh, short answer would be yes. Um, if we start analyzing how it can help at all, how digital solutions can help, consider at least economic order quantity uh, and how it changes after transportation costs um, rising X times. 
from what I I've seen in many companies, if they even if they calculate economic order quantity, they calculate it once a year. But uh, now you need to calculate it more often, and you would need some digital solution to take care of that. If we um, think about purchasing um, minimum quantities that we need to try um, to um, try to wait while the um, shortages uh, with containers and the cost transportation costs go down. Um, when we try to keep effective, um, we would need um, to calculate, for instance, equal number of uh, weeks of supply for all items in a container. Then we can purchase container by container. Again, this is hard to achieve without uh, automation. And um, of course, we are dealing with unpredictable uh, lead times, unpredictable delivery dates. and um, when I say unpredictable, I mean, we can't predict it even with digital solutions, but uh, uh, at least we can uh, start reacting fast to any changes that we see in, uh, in the um, delivery dates and, and so on. So um, acting fast based on available information uh, requires digital solutions because um, companies usually Estimate their um, um, reestimate their plans like once a month, in the best case, and often even uh, uh, not that often. <laughs> so, um, using a digital solution allows you to act fast and uh, um, take actions based on new informations immediately. So that gives you an advantage. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I do believe that this is actually what really can help us. Uh, Wolf, would you like to comment? Again, you are <coughs> helping businesses with this question. Yeah. And after, sorry for interrupting, after Wolf finishes, I want you guys, our attendees, to join and to comment. So uh, please get ready with your questions or comments if you do have. So Wolf, please stage is yours. Uh, as I mentioned, <clears throat> we're mostly dealing with uh, small and medium-sized businesses. That is, we find there many times that the system that these companies use are not integrated at all. So, for example, their ERP system, their production system, is not integrated with any, with any planning, with any supply planning me mechanism. And as Alex pointed out, quite often the planning is only done uh, at least yearly, annually, annually or half yearly or sometimes quarterly, not monthly, not even real time, which I believe is very, very important because we have all those changes. I mentioned that one company with, uh, with, uh, with uh, medical products, they have changes all the time because of the situation, changes in medical field all the time. So they need to adapt, they need to amend uh, customer orders and so forth. So they need to look at their supply chain all the time, in, in real time. And uh, it, it will be very important that integration, that real time uh, tracking also, tracking is, is, is highly uh, desirable uh, in that space. Uh, and, and as Gartner recently pointed out, and I looked at their report, uh, the, uh, the, the real time transport visibility platforms will be part of the solution for the future that we really know what's happening on an ongoing real-time basis, that companies are able and groups of companies are able to, uh, to review uh, the, the supply chain uh, all the time on a daily basis, not on a quarterly or yearly annual basis, because that is a big problem at the moment. Also uh, on a non-IT basis, uh, the big ships that have been introduced a few years ago, I think there was a mistake altogether. These huge giga ships, <laughs> much too big, the unloading, loading takes much too long, and the quick changes cannot be done. That's one of the things. Uh, more automation so that companies actually put doing their stuff back home again. Companies that build small little pieces in China, they may make do may do that here, but because of uh, because the labor costs are too high. They like to do that in China, even that in China now the labor cost is going up, not down. Uh, 
and and so they they need more automation here. The small companies need more automated processes. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, the major regional products more automation. That's my my, my thinking about what I just talked about. Totally agree. And actually, no, I do believe that not only small, but the same medium size and large enterprise, again, automation yeah. without automation, without quick decision. And what is most important, right managing decision. It's uh, difficult to survive and stay in business, doesn't matter what size is your company. So absolutely, totally agree with you. Yeah. So guys, as I already told, we have a couple of minutes for your comments and your questions right now. If you want to ask some questions, or if you want to comment if you want to share some of your uh, ideas so feel free feel free don't be shy we have a discussion all of your experts um rodrigo uh, alfaro what about you would you like to share some of your ideas i know that you are uh, teaching supply chain in college so your opinion is also important important and interesting Or Pablo. Hi. Uh -huh. Hi. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, well, um, I think it's been a great discussion with all of you. Thank you for all your experience and knowledge that you have shared with the with, with us. Uh, particularly, what I see is that uh, we need to keep uh, collecting the information on what's going on, and like uh, Carlo said that. We are not in the end of the situation. Uh, for example, we can think about the current uh, vaccine mandate in the U.S. Uh, many people won't go and take the vaccine for the reason that you may want. But uh, think about that from a capacity perspective. Uh, maybe we we may lose 10% uh, uh, of the capacity in the manufacturing and administrative functions. So uh, the... Uh, shortages of the containers is one thing that we are experiencing. We're experiencing the shortages of uh, truck drivers. But then if we go with this, then we will lose capacity. And that uh, bubble of uh, artificial demand, because it is uh, inflated with uh, what we call the safety stock, right? We use the safety stock to protect ourselves. So maybe we need to change a little bit the way we think in, in, from a planning perspective and start looking for what will be the real demand. And I think that uh, companies will migrate to, uh, uh, again, to the uh, old version of standardizing products, right? Avoid having uh, a lot of variety, which is what uh, they are presenting today in all the supermarkets, right? But this variety comes with the, uh, the flexibility that we used to have before the pandemic, right? And we were struggling a little bit to be able to, to adapt our uh, supply chains. So we are getting a little bit uh, more tight in that terms. So we need to think about that. And uh, uh, something that uh, could be a good idea is to start exploring the uh, demand-driven uh, methodology by the Demand Driven Institute. I see that we have here other colleagues that are, have uh, this designation. Uh, so it's a very good way to uh, start uh, adjusting our old systems because basically we are having uh, systems based on 1950, 1960s methodologies that were created back in the day. So this new approach uh, will help a lot of companies to adapt and survive. Thank you so much, actually. So interesting point of view, really, really. Uh, guys, uh, who else wants to share it? Because again, what is uh, most important for today's discussion is to, um, to understand new insights, new strategy, because again, what was working uh, 10 years ago definitely will not work uh, tomorrow. So we have to figure out what, what will work. And actually we have very nice comments from uh, attendees. So if you allow, I will read some of them. Um, if you focus on flow, cost will be minimized. If you focus only on reducing cost, uh, flow will be disrupted. Uh, economic or quantity is a result of chasing uh, reduced cost. 
Lordship is another. Some good points from all speakers. So speakers, uh, thank you to all. Uh, since there is economic or the quantity mentioned, Alex, would you like to uh, co uh, comment? Because I do know this is actually one of your point um, and one of your ideas actually, which you are um, advocating right now. So please, uh, economic or the quantity and actually your vision. Well, uh, to comment on this, uh, during different uh, market conditions, we uh, target different uh, uh, KPIs. Like um, if everything goes well, we target uh, maximum uh, service level. And um, uh, during crisis like this one, perhaps we should start targeting uh, uh, economy and uh, minimizing losses. Uh, because of extra carrying costs, because of uh, um, uh, because of lost sales, so I think that uh, economic order quantity is a great uh, concept uh, created a long time ago and uh, widely used, and um, uh, targeting uh, uh, lower costs is is. Um, it's a great solution. You just need to put it onto a right model where you have enough safe, safety stock on top of that anyway, because current uh, lead times are unpredictable and uh, that can break your um, classic approach in calculating AOQ. But if you put all factors into a model, it will be calculated the right way. Can you share what is your model? Uh, what is your formula? Because I do know that you have, but you're being so modest right now, uh, just in a couple of words. So how do you see economic order quantity? Because I know that you are working a lot on it. Yeah, economic order quantity, as I said, is a great concept. You just need to put all, uh, um, all factors that, um, um, that are needed to have your service level um, uh, protected and that includes um, uh, a set of items you are moving so economic order quantity is not about just one item like in classic concept you, you should think about all items in uh, in uh, in a group like in a, about a group of items that you're moving and economic order quantity for a group of items is a completely different thing also your safety stock on top of what you're purchasing should include um, uh, your new uh, potential lead times and um, uh, that should be dynamically calculated as well. And uh, your existing orders in transition that are delayed need to be put into equation so that uh, you're not trying to simply purchase um, uh, with a plan that is not that is not executed. So if uh, there is a disruption in, your, in uh, your plan execution, you should put that into model as well. Then it will be calculated correctly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sure that um, many of our attendees will keep this in mind. And we do have one more uh, attendee uh, from actually Mexico, Pablo, uh, who wants to add something. Pablo, welcome. Please feel free to unmute yourself and, and join our conversation. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, just uh... Uh, to let you know, I, I have uh, over 35 years of experience in the supply chain with many companies uh, like Procter & Gamble and Abbott Laboratories and many other. And uh, just one thought that supports what Alex has uh, said before. In general terms, uh, the supply chain needs to achieve a balance between demand and supply. That balance is achieved through planning. The better your planning is, the least inventory and capacity you require to balance with your demand. So what, any, any, any resource that is scarce can be uh, treated through better planning and to minimize the impact that this scarce resource has. 
So uh, I am totally, uh, uh, I am totally in favor of having better planning systems to face these kind of situations, like having shortage of, 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 of shipping containers or any other scarce resource. Uh, and I advise everybody to go to better planning systems, as Wolf was saying before, having planning and replanning frequently, which is the key to, uh, uh, to uh, face the changes that we're facing every day in the supply chain. Yeah. There's a change in, yeah. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Pablo, thank you for sharing your experience and your opinion. Thank you. That's always very important. Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, we have one more. Uh, Cap Captain uh, Issa, right? Captain Issa, please, please share your opinion. Yes. Uh, good evening. Good morning to everyone. I'm Captain Issa from Jordan. Uh, thanks for the speakers, Dr. Maha uh, and uh, Wolf, uh, Alex, and uh, Mr. Isaac as well. Uh, Natalie, uh, really, I want to understand that uh, uh, my good speakers tonight, are we talking about defensing on the owners and the lines about the or making excuses about the prices they are uh, charging us or we we should find the solution for them to reduce the line because to my calculation we should not come to these figures this is no excuse for the lines to come to these figures what they are charging 20,000 or 30,000 to, uh, to states or 10,000 to Jordan or 12,000 now they are reducing a little bit to my calculation because I'm a shipping man I'm, I'm CEO of, of a shipping uh, company I'm even a founder of uh, uh, I, I work in the container business for uh, 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 on board ships and uh, in the office as well. I couldn't find uh, uh, an, an, any any single point that excuse give the lines to charge such such figures. So we need the speakers to tell us what the solution to put the lines in in, in right way to uh, really because the speaks uh, the speeches I have here that like are making excuses for the owners to charge us this. We are putting this on the trackers on the drivers and then um, Dr. Maha talking about the port uh, organization uh, uh, systems. No, I don't agree with all of you that we should find the solution how to put the lines, the carriers on the line track in the right track to charge us really uh, things. This is my opinion. Uh, thank you very much for all. Thank you so much for your opinion. Uh, again, we are here to find uh, uh solutions we are here to listen to everyone we are here to write uh, right to, to find right direction to all of us so actually again since we have this uh, international uh, communication of course it is important to share to share each opinion thank you so much for sharing. okay uh, maybe, in... maybe I, I can make him a remark maybe yes please well please that uh, be, uh, in the preparation of this meeting I looked up the jewelry.co.uk site, and I don't, I don't know whether you know that jewelry, they, uh, they, they, they do their uh, world container index, the pricing and, and the volumes. When you, when you look through that, uh, there has been a steep rise in pricing, in cost uh, pricing uh, for, for containers as well as for, for field containers over the years, but they came down recently. They look at particularly look at forty foot uh, containers, and they came down recently. That's maybe one one a good good point and what uh, for for your for for your for your problem that you just mentioned. And what they say what they say is uh, there should be in the future a slower growth uh, and uh, uh, slower growth yes, and then consolidate more consolidated more profitable uh, routes. They say that's extremely important for the future. And also uh, the whole situation, the cost situation, the volumes should be more in the, in the public eye. So people, uh, we said before that uh, it should, uh, the numbers should be available to everybody almost. So that they see what part of transportation costs in, is in their daily food, in their parts, in their orders and so forth. And uh, they, that's, that's their recommendation out of, 
the numbers that they keep for years now, which they, these numbers are being updated on a weekly basis, which I find extraordinarily interesting. Drury, uh, may, maybe that's that would be a good idea, Captain, if you would uh, look at the Drury uh, insights and and maybe ask these guys uh, what what about what about whether these goals I just mentioned are being followed up on. All right. Thank you. Actually, I have something to add. Um, Go ahead. Actually, um, I believe that the increase in prices is can be justified from the economic perspective. We have shortage in supply and we have huge peaks in demand. And the much that the, the more demand, uh, the, the more the demand is going to increase, the more the prices are going to go. Yes. So I believe. Um, if we uh, look into this matter from a wider perspective, um, globalization is driven and has been always been driven with cost and time. Right now, the time is not the winning factor. So you are taking like 12 days in, in American ports, uh, the containers with around 12 days in American ports and up to three days in Chinese ports. And so I guess this is going to open the door to local competitors to rise again, and because now they are closer to you and they are cheaper from the imported product. And most importantly, uh, small and medium companies that are going to rise during this time, they won't have the tools that can, um, or the ability that um, accepts any waste or any losses or any lost sales because this is their only chance to rise and dominate the market. This is. This is where comes the role of uh, planning software because these software are going to help them um, calculate accurately what they need, uh, what are the, the market needs, and how to capture the market shares from from the competitors. So um, I guess that's one 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 of the results of the new normal that's going to result from COVID. Yeah, yeah that's true. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do have one comment from our attendees. Um, so comments is extremely interesting. Our clients all, uh, uh, all have the same question. When will the supply chain crisis peak? What is the cons uh, consensus of the panel experts? So experts, do you have answer to this question. Uh, are we having this crisis peak right now or are we are still expecting it in the future? Try to be optimistic, please. Uh, good point, good point. Um, so who has this answer? Who wants to share opinion? If, if the um, crisis is done, keep, is that the question? If so we keep, uh -huh. go, ahead, go ahead. If we keep on with the crisis for the next year, is that what the question? Or will it go down? The question was, uh, when will supply chain crisis peak? So when will we peak, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Well, I think we're still... As, I as think we... no one really knows. The, uh, I think no one really knows, but there are good reasons to suspect that there will be uh, into 2022, maybe longer thing like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maha. Well, what do you think? Problem. At, at the moment, at the moment, uh, for for a carrier, it is much more profitable to 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 uh, to deliver uh, full containers and not to, not uh, empty containers. So there will nothing happen until they actually there's a price on uh, if they get paid for for empty container bringing back empty containers. If if, if there's at the moment there's extreme mismatch. I believe it's it's around the factor of ten uh, that uh, they, they make ten times more money on carrying full containers and empty containers. So they won't bring them back. They don't even search for it. Uh, and they, they go to China, bring the stuff to Europe or, or America as fast as they can, get the full payment, and then they return without anybody looking after the, the, the after the, the the empty containers. Unless we implement a system. Where they will be tracked, yeah, across the country in America, in particular, and in Europe as well, and and uh, so, so I think the peak will be when when there's equilibrium there somehow between the two, uh, mm -hmm. 
until that happens, and China is building containers now as we speak. The Americans don't want them to do that, as you know. We have we have we have a strong we have a strong uh, um, uh, we're missing out on on, on a lot of um, chassis. You know the, the little devices where the containers are being transported on. They are missing them out. If we don't have them, if they don't have them in the ports, the, the stuff can't be moved on. So that's a big until all that is solved. All these little problems are being solved until the truckers are well paid. Until we have enough truckers again, the equilibrium, the equilibrium, the the peak has not been reached. Uh, in my personal opinion, I believe we're talking 2023, 25, something when maybe there's a turnaround, when the systems are all being aligned and so forth. Because it takes time until we can, we can actually align all those systems that we need. Until we get all these small, uh, these, these small freight con forwarders that clock up the system, they all have different um, paperwork. You know, we have a client, they, they use freight, small freight forwarders. They don't, they don't, they can't scan Papers, for example, they can't do that. Simply, they can't prepare for that. So until that is held has up and solved, uh, we can't we can't have we cannot reach the peak. We need all that the little IT devices as well as the big new planning systems linked up to the ERP systems that we have, and also users, consumers that behave better than they do at the moment <laughs> before Christmas. <laughs> before Christmas, it's. <laughs> Thanks, Wolf. Thanks. Thanks for a beautiful sense of humor. So we have one more comment, and I would ask actually Alex to comment uh, that comment. Um, and um, so after that, we will have actually to come to the end of this discussion, having a small summary. So um, we have comment from John Mulby. Thank you, John, for this comment. And he says, thanks, Rodrigo, for bringing up the demand-driven methodology. There is no magic bullet, of course, but doing the wrong things faster is not an answer. Totally agree. So Alex, would you uh, like to comment? Because again, demand, this is, this is what is your... Uh, strong point too. So I do believe that uh, it would be nice having your comment, but please only one minute because we have, we don't have much time. Yeah. Um, uh, frankly, I'm not a big fan of the demand driven methodology because uh, it says our current demand is uh, um, what we should consider when we create plans. But um, I think forecasting is important and uh, looking forward is important to avoid uh, uh, crisis in your supply chain, uh, taking into account crisis in the uh, global supply chain. So I would say that forecasting would be uh, necessary to overcome uh, extra expenses and uh, to deal in, in an optimal way with the current situation. So actually this is a new, um methodology and you strategy which we probably have about right now right so since we have a little bit uh, Can I say something very quick regarding that? Uh, when when we talk about the demand-driven methodology, it's not putting away forecasting. It's uh, knowing when we need to use it, right? Currently, the systems as you are using the forecast to uh, trigger the planning process. So the forecasting is better done at the aggregated level to make strategic decisions. Now, using the current demand will give you the more accurate uh, source of demand that you have. So yeah, and we are not putting away the forecast. Forecast is a relevant issue or a relevant uh, item in the uh, methodology to uh, shape the operating model that we need to have. So just to mention that, we are not putting away the forecasting. Thank you so much. Okay, we still have Kiralos. And uh, uh, Dr. Maha. So, uh, yeah, okay, Carol, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, I actually agree that um, I don't, from my from my from my perspective, I don't believe that the peak is coming anywhere uh, is going to come to an end anywhere anytime soon, because until now uh, I see that we have not moved into the drivers of the problem. 
again, it's an economic problem. So it's either we decrease the demand by reevaluating our buying habits. Like we, people have iPhone 12 Pro Max, and the moment iPhone 13 has been announced, uh, it went out of shelves. It it has been all uh, sold out, and Apple is now having struggle to sell it again. So I guess having long lead times going to allow the customers to reevaluate their buying habits. Do I really need it? Uh, since it's going to, to arrive two months later. Mm -hmm. From the other perspective, during the COVID crisis, a lot of ports reduced the headcount of people and laid off a lot of people in the ports, which mm -hmm. weakened the ports actually and left them uh, uh, under, uh, under ready uh, for what was coming from them as, as a demand. Actually also, those people are not easy to bring back right now because they just didn't starve to death. They went on and they joined online jobs that just uh, emerged during the COVID crisis. Uh, so I guess that that that's one uh, important driver for the problem. So we either decrease the demand by reevaluating our uh, uh, buying habits or strengthening the port supply power by uh, headcount and containers and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you so much. Totally agree, Dr. Maham. Hello, sorry for that. Uh, uh, I agree with the Captain Isa that we must to find a solutions and we are not with the shipping lines that we give them any excuses that uh, they increase the cost of the shipping. Uh, one of the solution we, we talk about uh, about the sharing guard uh, mm -hmm. between the yard operation container terminals and the circles uh, this is one of the uh, solution the other solution we talk about that when we use the digital supply chain we talk about the automated freight uh, system management uh, this will be uh, the as a system uh, give us uh, the the great idea or the accurate idea about the loading and the unloading uh, of the containers and we give us a capabilities uh, one of the uh, uh, new reports of the recent reports talk about that we we must to use our capacity uh, in the ports uh, and we must to increase our freight service uh, to return to our investment thank you all of you. thank you so much thank you uh ladies and gentlemen so actually we uh already use five minutes more times than we were supposed to. So probably we do have to finish for today again, because I do respect time of all of you. But just for you to know, we're going to have discussion like this, live discussion with speakers from different countries, different continents each month. So today we just had first discussion, but next month and after that in January and in February, we're gonna have those discussion because we do believe that sharing experience globally, this is definitely what will help us make right managing decision, find right strategies, um, uh, actually make right steps, right? So I do invite you to join us uh, next month, definitely will receive invites, everything. And what else is important? Uh, we are still thinking and working on topics. So if you do have some topics which you want to suggest, feel free just to contact me on LinkedIn and just uh, send your topics, your opinions, and we will uh, consider them while uh, preparing next uh, uh, sessions. So uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you all for beautiful discussion. Uh, thank you for your experience, for your expertise, for your time, for your efforts. Uh, we do have a lot of good, nice comments uh, from attendees. So thanks, speakers. Thank you, attendees, for coming. Thank you all. Definitely, we will have recording. And I do believe that uh, you, everyone who is registered for this discussion, you will receive your recording just in a couple of days. And uh, talk to you soon, actually. Talk to you soon. See you next month.